What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. I had a delivery and it's a heavy one. So I'm open. Yes. This is my new diet and follower. And it's huge. Look at that. They do make these nice, it has to be said. Right, so that's the new diet and follower. Got a captive plate, that goes on there. And that's the follower. So I can set up the tube bender ready for the weekend when hopefully Steve-O is down and he's got some stainless steel with him and we can start making exhaust pipes. That'll be cool. So we can get that done. He also dropped off some other bits and pieces. Let's move you out of the way. He dropped off some other bits and pieces. <laughs> well, We've got some plate, alley plate. So there's two bits in there and we'll be using those to make the uh, footrest hangers. So that's cool. Um, the other thing I'll say, anything you've got left that needs to go on the bike, like carbs and blah, 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 you know, whiz them all down and I'll get them stuck on so we can start seeing what's what. And he said, well, I'll start cleaning the carbs and that so they're all in pieces. Well, that's all right, we'll put them back together again and just drop them down and I'll stick them on the bike. So we put them back together. There's one of them. There's another one of them. <laughs> There's another one. <laughs> oh, Steve-o. This is not back together. But it is a set of flat slides. Why doesn't that go up anymore? Has he put them back together wrong? He has, hasn't he? Oh. Right, okay, we'll sort that out. Um, we've got all the supports and stuff for it as well. Uh, what's that, choke linkage. And we've got the boots. So at least if I can get them back together again, we can hoof them on the bike and then we can check for clearances and all that sort of stuff. So that's a good thing. I'll just need to sort, actually I might just put the rails on because they're all gonna have to come apart and go through the ultrasonic anyway. I think he's put them back together again wrong because the slides don't move like they should do. <laughs> what else we got? It's got axles. What's, what have you got axles for? I've got axles. Oh well. Um, starter motor for the engine, which is loose. <laughs> um, bum, 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 bum. What's that? It's wrapped up. Oh, a couple of ECUs. Well, we've already got a couple of ECUs, so we don't need them. Happy days. So, stuff to be getting on with. All right, that's all the nuts and bolts for the carbs. All right, let's do that up, because I know what will happen. <laughs> Done that before. You never find all of them again either. Right, okay. Um, pom, pom, pom. More cardboard boxes. Right then. Might as well set the two fender up, hey. At least it's up and ready and then I ain't got a cock about. Right, let's do that.
carbs. He's going to need to get a service kit for these, obviously. Uh, bits of the fuel rail have snapped off inside them. I've had to pull them out. He didn't put them back together again. Um, pom, pom, pom. Right, so here's an end one. Throttle position sensors, so that'll be another end one. Uh, that'll be the cable run. Right, so they're going to go like that. I think. Um, let's just. Right. So they'll go in there. They'll go in there. Now we'll go in there. Okay. Um, boom, 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 boom. Right, I think all I'm going to do, because all I'm doing at the minute is just checking placement anyway. These are minging. He's also put the caps on the wrong ones. <laughs> that one and that one is on the wrong one. Because you want the, the bleed screw facing out so you can physically get to it. I might do that now, actually. It kind of smacks of, just throw it together. <laughs> but unless you're quite careful with this, well, I find anyway, it's, it's a me thing. It's not necessarily a you thing. I find unless you're quite particular about how you take it apart and how you lay stuff out and all that sort of thing, when it comes to putting it back together again, quite often you can just sit there scratching your head going, well, where did that go then? I don't know. Um, carbs ain't my specialty, but I can find my way around them. Come on. Well, at least he put the floats and needles and stuff back in. No, no, yeah, there is a gasket. He's going to need to get a service kit anyway. Going to need to. Um, these are all going to go through the ultrasonic bath, obviously, and get cleaned up. And then we might try and brighten them up a little bit as well. Just because you shove it through the, the ultrasonic and they, they sort of come out a bit dull. I think Craig did a thing. I'm going to have to go back through his videos and see what it was that he used. Um, but he had this stuff that he put on with a toothbrush and give it a scrub. And they came up lovely. So we might be doing that. But this is just replacement. So I'm going to get this bank back together again. Fuel rails aren't going to be put in. I'm not going to bother with the choke rail and stuff like that. There is no point. I just want to get them on the bike so I can see what sort of clearances we've got around it. Um, and then we can sort of go from there. You know, it's just stuff like makes all the boots the right. I mean, it's a... Uh, I think you have to get... I think this is just a second-hand set of boots. I'm not sure. They don't look new. But I'm pretty sure I remember him saying that he didn't have any. Alright, so we can go on there. What screws have we got? Yeah. Alright, <laughs> well, there's a mishmash of all sorts in here. So I've got all the bits and pieces he supplied there. All I've done is put the rails back on the carbs so they're as one chunk and spaced out as they need to be and everything else. Um, fuel line's not in, haven't put the choke assembly on, any of that lot. I just want placement, basically. We're going to need to get a service kit for this anyway because the stuff is horrible. Stuff is minging, actually. <laughs> but at least they're all together, so at least I can stick them on the bike. Um, 
it's just a mishmash of different fastenings and he's put a bag of bolts and stuff in here of different stainless ones that obviously he wants to use. As far as the boots go, um, I'm assuming that they fit. Yes, that's a good start. <laughs> Trouble is he's only given me four of the bloody screws to put them on with, so I'm gonna have to have a rummage and see what I can find in my box of odds and sods. Um, I'm not sure I've actually got anything. Um, can't be too long. Oh, that might do it. Oh, that might do it. Let's just check it on the head. All right. Have I got any more of them? After lots of cocking about, <laughs> just trying to hunt down screws that will fit and stuff because he hadn't given me all the fittings or anything else. Um, this should go on, which it does. All right, you can squeeze in there for now. I'm not bothering with clamps or any of that stuff. Again, it's only placement. Come on. Quite tight, isn't they? Right. Carbs is on. Okay. Alright, starting to hash out a little bit of a plan um, for this rear master cylinder. We've got placement of pegs and everything else. Uh, and this is the template we're going to be using for it. And it's only on loose, but you get the idea. So this, you can see the frame kind of comes up here and it comes down here. Don't really like that. For the template, we've got a big gap in the middle here. That gap is going to close up, and I want to sort of cover this piece here up as well, and that bit. So it's basically going to come from here down to the foot peg, around the foot peg, and then back down like that. That's what those plates are going to be for. Um, as far as mounting the brake master cylinder goes, it's very it's a very trick little bit of kit actually. It's got um, the reservoirs all built into it, but what I'm thinking if we can get that out of the way, is to mount it, something like that, on top of this, so it's all part and parcel. So there'll be a cutout for it. Um, the lever's obviously going to come off this pivot point, so as you push the lever down, there'll be a bit that comes up, this will all get shortened up and it'll obviously push the, the plunger in, but that's what it's going to look like, I think. Something like that. You can mount it on its edge, not an issue. Um, the pickup for the reservoir is in the back here. So the only awkward bit is going to be filling the reservoir up. Um, so to do that, you're just going to have to unbolt it, top it up, screw the cap back on, put it back again, and then carry on with your bleeding. Um, but I think that's how it's going to be. Hmm. Well, Steve O's down at the weekend, so we can discuss it then, so that'll be all right. Right, it is now Wednesday. Uh, I'm just looking at these controls because I'm thinking I might as well stick these on and get the handlebars built up. Um, I think they're both the same, actually. Are they both the same? So that's a two-stage switch. So is that. That's a momentary switch. And a two-stage switch on the back. So yes, they are the same. So what I want to do is I don't want to see the cable. So the cable is going to get scrawled away in the clip on, which means shoving a hole in it. And I'm going to need to bend them connectors down because at the minute, I don't know, can you see in there? These little pins, <laughs> they just poke straight where the clip on's going to go. So they need to come apart. Right, where's my Allen keys? 
Right, they're only just nipped up. Um, but I'm thinking, because we're going to have the headlamp sitting here anyway, there is a nice little opening there for cables to come out and I can just squirrel them straight up and underneath the, the headstock. So that could work out quite nicely. I'm never going to get this back on again, am I? Oh, I don't know. See, I'm not a big fan of drilling holes in, in clip-ons at all. These clippers, it's already got a hole where the original switch gear had a little peg on it that sits in there just to stop it rotating. These ones just clamp up. I think you can have them anywhere you want. Stock ones can only go in one position unless you have that peg off. Um, so I don't like the idea of drilling another hole or making that hole bigger because you're hanging on to these. You don't want them going anywhere. But if I stick it on lock, so that's going to be the longest one. And that's going to be the shortest one. So, no, that'll do it. And even if I was to send it through the handlebars, where these come out is like 20 mil away from coming out here. And I just think having cables coming out and then disappearing under the yokes, just for the sake of it, it just ain't worth it. So I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. <laughs> if he wants to argue the point, he can argue it. But he's the one getting the drill out. <laughs> <laughs> right, so they're done. What else have we got? <clears throat> See, you're going to have to wait. Oh, throttle assembly. Very nice throttle assembly. Right, you can go on. Cool, so it looks like it's got a complete kit, which is nice. And he left the bag done up, so nothing has escaped. <laughs> oh, look, even get an Allen key. Right, let's pop him in there. Ven Hill. That might be going on the door. Kit the cables universal. Right, universal kit. <laughs> yeah, that's easy enough. What's this? Mm -hmm. Right, so this is a variable throttle. Basically, it's like a quick action throttle. When I was on the um, when I was doing the racing and on road bikes that I've had ever since, I've always fitted a quick action throttle. I normally go for the Domino ones because they're a doddle. It's just a throttle body. You get like plastic inserts that, you know, like a, it's like the cable run that the cables go around. And obviously a bigger diameter one gives you a faster throttle action. You can get ones that ramp up and all sorts, which are a bit of a waste of time. But, um, they are quite good and you do get used to them. And it's just like, you know, for, for ages when I was on track, you're thinking, why aren't I coming out of these corners quicker? And then you find out you haven't got the throttle all the way open. Because, <laughs> yeah, it can be quite a bit of a reach like that. Um, so I do like them. I do like them. Interesting, it's a variable one, though. So, right, let's get this on. He wants to go on some See, that is really snug. And I can't go much further because of the switch gear. So we've got a gap there. That's a bit of a pain, isn't it? to go in the end. 
Right, he needs to see this then. I'm going to stick it on just so he can see. Where is it? Right, so there you can see the trouble. It is a lovely bit of kit, it has to be said. Not the smoothest of actions, but we can clean all that up and make it go. However, this little overhang here um, rubs up on the um, switch gear. And if you look in the end, uh, come on, focus, do that thing, there we go. So you can see there's about five or six mil gap to the end of the bar. Um, we've got bar end indicators to go on this. And if you put the, the grip where it needs to be, you can see it kind of, it is the right length from there to there. So obviously open ended, and we just have the bar end indicator sticking out the end of it. So it will be going like that, which is fine, as you can see. However, you know, that could be a bit of an issue with the bar end indicator, and that just looks bloody horrible. We look on the other bar, and that's where the grip will be going, and there is space there to move that switch gear onto that side. So basically you just have all the switch gear on one side, which could be an option. But again, this is just why we're chucking everything on the bike. Because he needs to decide how he wants it to be. That ain't my choice. So I'm just going to leave all this here. <laughs> and when he's down on Saturday, he can have a look and he can tell me what he wants to do. All right, bar end indicators. Pretty simple ones, as you can see. See, these just look a bit daft to me. They've got a nut on the bottom that you wind that down and it squashes this rubber collar, but how are you supposed to do it up? <laughs> I think it's just a case of do it up. So you can only just get the bugger in the end of the handlebar and then ram it in. The design of these always seems a bit stupid to me, but there you go. They will certainly look the part though. So there's no point in sticking them on until we decide quite what we're doing with his switch gear. What else we got? Side stand. We're gonna need that on, because I wanna be doing exhaust at the weekend. Right, well, let's shove this on. That'll keep me busy for five minutes, won't it? All right, I know that this is probably gonna be the wrong length. See, he has been mucking about with it. Some has been chopped off there. I think it's the post that he used just to get the stand out from under the bike. Um, I've got no idea if this stand is the right length or anything. Um, but I do know that this is where it's going to sit. And I also know that we're going to have an exhaust coming out here at some point. So it needs to be on, just so I can make sure that we ain't going to be um, fouling up on anything and the exhaust can come out where it needs to. Um, do I bother sticking the springs on? I probably should, shouldn't I? Uh, um, 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 spring hooks. We can go on there. Come on. on. Yes. Right. Okay thing. one. 
Right, so yeah, if we've got an exhaust that's wrapping around here somewhere, it's got to come out here someplace, and I don't want it in that. So, he's got a side stand anyway. Be interesting to see if that is the right size. <laughs> right, what I'm thinking, because you want to keep it neat and tidy, what I'm thinking is making a, making a thing, making two things. <laughs> Let me show you. Right, this is probably the dumbest idea ever, but I'm gonna suggest it to him anyway. So Edlamp wants to go about there. Yeah? We got um, mounting point on the sides, one on each side. And he wants to come off the off the yoke. However, I'm looking down there and I'm thinking that is gonna be just a massive pain to get underneath and get round the back of the headlamp and everything else. But then I'm also looking at those two bolts there, one for the clip-on and one for the top yoke. And what I'm thinking is if I've got a little piece of alley bar, and I've got a big old chunk of it over there, I could make something that picks up on those two bolts and then just runs out to that side mounting. Um, it would probably only be No, I don't know, three inches long, something like that. Three inches long, inch and a half high, but it means we wouldn't have any more sort of, you know, bits and doickies and stuff going around the fork leg to hold it up. Now, I mean, if you see the old clamps and stuff that he had, it was horrible. The other good bit about that, I suppose, is that because they'd all be machined equal, it means that your clip-ons would be in the same place, exactly the same place every single time, because there would be that bracket that passes through them to keep it all central. And it doesn't matter if they're a little bit stepped, because at, at the minute, the, um, you know, the clip-ons and the top yoke, this bit here, where my thumb is, is, oh, hang on, they're actually, oh, what are you doing? They're actually sort of staggered but I don't know what his riding position is going to be, so he needs to sit on it and tell me, but I'm thinking that might be a way of, of fixing the headlamp, because this is quite a heavy bit of kit as well. You know, it's all glass fronted and made of metal and everything, so it's not lightweight, is what I'm saying. The, um, the old clamps he had was absolutely horrible, they're not going back on it, but I think that could work. See, if you look here, and they are staggered, but I could mill that into the block and then just have it at an angle so it comes out and just picks up on the on the headlamp mount. I don't know. Don't know. That's another one for Steve-O to think about. The other thought we had was coming off the underside because there's a, there's a block here. There isn't one on this side, so I'd need to weld one in. And then some sort of bracket that kind of comes round. That's what you can't see. So there's a block there that it would mount into and then it comes down and around to the mounting point, which is be about here. But then you think, well, that's only one mount there and one mount here. You, you know, it's gonna move, it's gonna wobble. Whereas if I've got two points of fixings on here and then one point there where it goes into the handlebar, you know, it's gonna be triangulated and then it's gonna, it's gonna be a, bit, a, a lot stiffer and a lot stronger. So I'm thinking we might do something there. We could even make it so it kind of covers all this junk here up, I don't know. That's probably a little bit ambitious, but I don't know, we'll give it a go. I'll suggest it to him, see what he says. Right, that neatens that up. What have we got? What's this? Chinese. Something blue. Oh, it's a USB charging jobby. Well, that's all right, we're gonna need this. Um, we're running the M unit blue. So, essentially, that replaces your ignition key. You just wander up to your bike with Bluetooth turned on, the two pair, and it's just like turning the ignition on. So you just hit the start button and away you go sort of thing. Which is awesome, till your battery runs out of charge. <laughs> and then you're a little bit buggered. 
So we're going to squirrel this away underneath the seat somewhere and we'll have like one of them little mounting cradles that you can just stick your phone in. That way, you know, there's, there's no metal work or anything else to block it. And it's right next to the M unit. Um, and then you just have it charging, you know, whilst you're riding along and all that sort of stuff. And you should never come across a problem. We just need to wire it up to the battery so it's permanently on and it's not a switch desk. Right. Um, I don't think there's anything else in there really that we need. Um, let's put stuff down that we do need. What's that? Oh, that's his little reservoir for the front brake. That's the fixing kit, so we're going to need that. We're going to have to mount that. Cables. Empty box. Empty box. M unit. There's his boxes for his indicators. And his bar end indicators. I've got more ECUs than I can shake a stick at. And the rest of this is just odds and sods and junk and stuff. Um, if I keep junk and stuff together, Chain, that's all right. Split link. Ain't gonna need them. <laughs> we'll have that out as well. I don't know why, but we'll have that out. I do hope he's changing these. Green on that bike, can you imagine that? Right, so that's it then. Of course, she's dusty, isn't she? I've stuck everything on that I've got, basically. Um, my starter motors and, you know, whatever. Pfft, not really too bothered about them at the minute. It's just getting all the ancillary bits and pieces on. Um, he does need to make this and, you know, have a, have a gander and make a couple of decisions. I do like the idea of that adjustable um, quick action throttle, but it just don't fit. And having both switches on the same side would just look junk. It would look horrible. Um, so he needs to make a call. Um, if I was him, I'd be binning this off and getting like a domino one. Because you'll get the same, same effect out of it. And you know, they are minimal and they work really well. They're just dead simple. There's nothing to go wrong on them. <laughs> So anyway, we've had a tidy up. We're all set up, two benders good and set to go. Um, today's Thursday. Um, I'm not gonna be able to come in tomorrow just because I've got stuff I need to be getting on with and doing. Um, but I haven't seen any stainless steel tubing turn up. So I've had a chat with the fellas in the office. If it turns up this afternoon, then they'll just stick it in the unit for me. Uh, either that or Friday, they'll do the same thing. Not a problem. So, Steve-O is absolutely down at the weekend because I checked. <laughs> and hopefully we'll be making exhausts. Hopefully, if the steel tubing turns up. But anyway, that's where I'm gonna leave it today. Thank you very much for joining us. Do hope you're staying safe. Um, and we'll see you again at the weekend.